after the death of Maria Callas, the critic and noted Callas authority, John Ardoin, wrote a lengthy audio documentary entitled Callas in Her Own Words. There is narration and excerpts of her singing, but it also included recordings of her speaking about her life, her art, and her beliefs. This episode marks the beginning of a slow erosion of her career and psychological strength. The founding of the Dallas Civic Opera by former Chicago colleagues Lawrence Kelly and Nicola Rechino, the prickly relationship with Rudolf Bing, which then provided unbridled white-hot passion to her Medea, Il Pirata in Milan and Carnegie Hall, the entrance of Aristotle Onassis into her life, and separation from Meneghini. It is the fulfillment of a woman and the downfall of a career. Part 4 of 6 A year earlier, she had sung this opera at La Scala and had chosen to use it as a way of showing her anger at Ghiringhelli. As Imogene cries out, La vedete il palco finesto, there, you see the fatal scaffold, Callas moved downstage, pointing her finger directly at Ghiringhelli's box. There was pandemonium and wild cheering from the audience, who were flabbergasted to witness this amazing act of defiance against a powerful and much-hated man. But Callas paid a price. She did not sing again at La Scala for another two years. Here is the Carnegie Hall Pirata.
In the summer of 1959, Carlos and her husband were invited by the Greek shipping tycoon Aristotle Onassis to join him on his yacht, the Christina, for a cruise with Winston Churchill. At the beginning of the trip, the press focused on Churchill. By the time it was over, the attention had shifted to Onassis and Kalas. A few months later, Kalas and Meneghini separated. At New York's Kennedy Airport, Kalas was besieged by reporters for details of her romance with Onassis. I'm giving no interview. Why, why did you cut short your trip? Please. Are you going to marry Mr. I said don't. I'm not answering any interview. Now stop it. Are you glad to be back in New York? That's an uncontroversial question. Well, I'm, ha I'm, I'm, I'm happy I'm not staying more, if that's what you mean. Why is that? Why not? Because we're bothering Because I'm leaving, my God. Use your mind a bit. So I'm going to sing in a minute again. I hope so. You, you, you do hope to come back to no, the Met? No, not You, you may have Mr. Bing? Mr. Bing? No more fights. I'm sorry no. for you, Do <laughs> you expect to sing next season? We haven't. We don't know yet. Uh, what, what are you hoping to sing? I can't sing anything. Do you hope this trip uh, in Italy will uh, yeah. end this romantic squabble that the ones have been predicting? This is no romantic squabble. It's a separation. Many people have condemned Meneghini, but artistically speaking, Maria functioned as an artist, because it was just the house and the theater. With the advent of Onassis, it gave Maria something that, as a woman, she had never known before. When Onassis wooed a woman, it was like an emperor wooing a goddess. Planes were put at your disposal, boats. I mean, I remember having dinner with both of them many times in Paris. I mean, you'd walk into these famous restaurants, everybody would be on their knees. It was the best that that type of life could offer. On the other hand, I must admit, it was the beginning of her downfall. And I think that uh, she would have been, as an artist, much better off had she never met Onassis. Legally separated from Meneghini, Galas began a nine-year relationship with Onassis, in which she began to fulfill herself as a woman. But the artist suffered. For two years, there were no operatic performances, only a handful of concerts.
is a barber from Paris, and here is a Carmen from Hamburg.
During an engagement in London, she was asked during an interview... Would you yourself like to go away, say, for two years and not sing at all? I'm afraid that will happen in about a year. After that, I'm afraid I will give up singing, if not completely, at least very rarely I will sing. Only in occasions that will be worth my while. Because I really feel that I'm wasting my energy uh, just for the sake of celebrity, which I think and feel I have obtained even maybe too much. Mm. So, as I said, I feel a duty to myself and to art to work the least possible and the better possible. Mm. And I'm really serious about yes. it. is a barber from Paris, and here is a Carmen from Hamburg.
During an engagement in London, she was asked during an interview... Would you yourself like to go away, say, for two years and not sing at all? If it does? I'm afraid that will happen in about a year. After that, I'm afraid I will give up singing, if not completely, at least very rarely I will sing. Only in occasions that will be worth my while. Because I really feel that I'm wasting my energy uh, just for the sake of celebrity, which I think and feel I have obtained even maybe too much. Mm. So, as I said, I feel a duty to myself and to art to work the least possible and the better possible. Mm. And I'm really serious about yes. this. 